Um, everyone's becoming so much more conscious of water. And uh, each state has a requirement on how, the, how, how much water they really can have for non-revenue water. I believe Minnesota is about 10%. Some states are still 15 and 20%. When in all actuality, sometimes it's 5 to 40% that can be non-accounted for. Water is tricky. It sneaks away in those leaks, as you all know. Um, so leaks contribute to about 40% of the utilities' unaccounted water. And in most cases, if, you know, sometimes you'll have a leak that you know is on a main line, and, and we all hope it'll surface, but only about 15% of those leaks really do. Um, the guys went out last week, I can't remember what city it was for, but the leak had surfaced, but the leak truly originated 115 feet away from where it showed up. And so to save money and water, to, to locate those is much quicker and cheaper. Um, and also, additional water meters, sometimes we all know sometimes they're out of whack and they can contribute to about 30% of the unaccounted water, or sometimes just 30% of other, loss, other causes can cause that water loss. Your cities probably have gone through and done some of the math, sometimes trying to account for that pretty basic where you try and look for the unaccounted water and you do the math and you try and figure out, okay, are we off or are things are pretty close? Are we getting paid for what we're producing? And when you're not, it's always good to look for those other sources. So a water audit's a good place to start. And um, having a water audit or even just a plan to, to manage your water and that unaccounted water. So a good leak detection program or management could be, you know, doing the water audit, doing some leak detection and repair. A lot of cities now are replacing lines, um, updating their systems. So these can help you to maintain your precious water sources and reduce your costs. Some of the things you can do, um, well, if you're <coughs> having that program, can determine your distribution. Oh, getting sticky up here. Um, distribution uh, system efficiency. You can help the water utility implement new programs to reduce water and revenue losses. Um, you can create uh, performance history. You know, tracking things for the city and the facility. Um, you want to increase knowledge of your system. You can increase your firefighting capacity. Uh, you can increase your hydrants and valve uh, testing and inspection. You can update your distribution maps. You know, a lot of uh, <coughs> systems now can do that GIS mapping for your uh, infrastructure. You can inspect your pipes, cleaning and maintenance. But it's something that's, you know, always ongoing and you do so many things with your water as it is. But these are ways that you can cut down your costs. Um, the water audit is a thorough examination of the water agency records and system control of your equipment, um, meters and whatnot. The overall goal is to identify, quantify, and verify water and revenue losses. Um, to do a water audit, you're going to, you know, uh, there's some great software out there that you can get. I think AWA, I shouldn't say, but there's other systems where you can get even free software or there's booklets you can buy. Um, that'll make it very easy for you. So you just want to identify and quantify all your water use categories, the bulk sales, you know, your, your knowing leakage, different tanks, the drainage, store tank overflow, of course your city line flushing and the fire protection. <coughs> so you're going to watch your system for 13 months and monitor it. You're going to um, have your calculations, um, that's why the software is really nice to use with that. Then you're going to have a total amount of water sales for the same period. You're just going to do your math and comparisons. Um, and that'll go through your water produced, so total amount sold, or your other categories where you have the water. Um, and that's going to help you identify <coughs> the areas that are leakage, your inaccuracies in the meters, um, improper size meters. Sometimes there's hookups and people are using the water underestimated accounts and then accounting errors. Also, after you do your water audit, we can come through, or a lot of companies now will do a leak survey for you. It's kind of more of a proactive thing versus waiting for the emergent leaks to show up. And a lot of your cities and facilities I know are doing this already. Um, we just go through and do an evaluation ahead of time, you know, doing it maybe yearly or bi-yearly, where you go through and you assess the pipes for evidence of leaks. Um, the benefits of it, your leaks are a shorter duration of time, so you're, you're being proactive, you're finding them before they're affecting your roads um, in different areas. 
you can evaluate areas of potential leaks. You know, maybe there's some older lines. Um, evaluate suspect valve or hydrant leaks. And the survey can usually do about 30 to 60,000 linear feet a day, so that's approximately 6 to 12 miles a day. Um, again, the benefits are you're going to reduce your non-revenue water, such as the pumping rates and raw water treatment costs, reduce your liability, reduce your repair costs, um, avoid system contamination, and then uh, we can test both sides of the meter for you, again, where those uh, service lines are versus where the meter is always going to seem a little bit struggling. Um, survey information continues with the percentage of out-of-county water loss. Um, we'll determine the, the run, how many gallons per minute. So, oh, this is information that we'll need in order to do the survey, excuse me. Um, we'll need to know that footage, the type of material, um, map of the area, any recent changes or events, you know, any leaks or new buildings, etc. water loss and storage tanks, just so we have a good understanding of what information we want to gather when we're doing that survey. And these are just some other statistics where um, surveys have been done. You can see even finding like 13 leaks on a system can save about $100,000. Um, mainline leaks, as you know, probably give off about 30,000 gallons. Uh, service line leaks are about 2,500 gallons. So you lose a lot of water in those leaks. Can I, oh, I probably jumped a little there. There we go. Um, so a leak survey tool, you may even have some with your facilities, but they go through and they'll listen for leaks um, so we can kind of work an area quicker. We're going to find an area that may be leaking, then you can go back with a correlator or listening equipment and, and isolate it down. But this is a shorter, quicker way to go through and evaluate like a whole system. Uh, we'll listen to the valves, the hydrants, uh, curb stops, any possible pipe. So we're listening for those noise, so for an area that we can isolate down later on. Um, so again, the significance of doing leak detection or survey is just to, to cut down your non-revenue water, reduce your dry holes, you know, locate those leaks rather than having you tear up other things, uh, reduce property damage, reduce liability of the facility, reduce that risk of contamination, reduce your pumping and power costs, and just improve the efficiency of your facility. <coughs> again, you know, uh, reduce the amount of needing new construction, extend your life, um, improve your city's, you know, awareness too, even with conservation. You want a reduction in wastewater treatment costs and then recapture that lost revenue. And just water is just becoming so precious and expensive. Just a table, and you're probably very aware, but um, under like 60 pounds of pressure, if you have a 1.4 inch hole, you can lose almost 362 gallons in a minute. So you're losing a lot of water just from the smallest little hole. Um, so again, just to increase awareness. And the different types that are on your systems, I'm sure you're very aware, you can have service line leak, a valve leak, the supply lines. And then of course the causes of leaks that we're all worried about this year, the freezing soil, the frost load, traffic, you know, everything that changes that, that surface for the pipes, the water condition, you know, the electric current, pressure, velocity, temperature, you, will, you know far better than I do how tough it is on these pipes. And of course, signs of leaks, you probably know too, but again, this is just good stuff if you ever want to send it out to your city, to your residents, just to remind them, look for these kind of things in your yard, you know, wet spots, mold, uh, drop in water pressure or flow, rust in the water, heaving or cracking in paved areas, sinkholes, on even floor rate or leaning, sudden increase in water, um, you know, they call us when they have water in their basement. And sometimes um, it's been their own service line, but sometimes it's a neighbor's line. So it's always nice if we can figure out who's leaking before things get replaced. Um, so there's different ways of looking for these leaks. Um, we don't use just one system. You know, there is a correlator that find the big main leaks, but you can use listening equipment, the survey tools. So you kind of want to have a lot of tools in your um, in your belt to find these different types of leaks. And, this is just information how it travels. You may know this already, but cast iron is the, the nicest 
pipe to find a leak on because of course it conducts the sound better. Um, plastic is challenging. It, it's been done, but it's more challenging just because it doesn't allow that size, that sound, excuse me. <coughs> so you can see on the 24 inch PVC pipe, you're only going to get sound to travel 50 to 100 feet, where a 6 inch cast iron is 600 to 1,000. So. We'll get called out a lot of times where a, a developer will put in a plastic line in a new development and then they, they don't pass inspection and, and we'll help them with that. <coughs> so acoustic vibration is basically what we're looking for when we're looking for a leak. The different factors are you know, the pressure in the line, size of the leak, presence or absence of the resonating cavities around the leak. And then sometimes you know you want that vibration, and if the ground is clay or really packed, it cuts down all that. But that's why you know we have quite a few different things that we we'll use looking for a leak. Even some of the new lines will have the contractor abandon it. We'll have to um, have gas put in it to find them sometimes. So we have lots of different equipment. Um, so it's basically problem solving when you're looking for these leaks. You know, you, it's really helpful if we're given knowledge <coughs> about the pipes. Um, we, you know, kind of do a systemic approach, like going to the doctors. We do a process of elimination. You know, you want somebody that's going to be pretty particular and detail, different equipment knowledge and experience. So sometimes, uh, you know, it's easy to have the equipment, but sometimes you need a little more experience with it too. This is just a picture of a leak that was flowing um, down the storm drain. Didn't even show up, and it was two of 25. Um, gallons per minute, but it, we found it, but that wouldn't have surfaced going down a storm drain. Uh, this one was a correlation of an underground, but boy, that's a pretty big leak there. And this one, this leak was over in the field, but the leak showed up 100 feet away. <coughs> so water's really never easy. It always looks for that weakest source to travel. It doesn't show where it's leaking. Um, this is all you know, valves can leak to. I'm sure you've seen plenty of them. So basically a test plan we go through and we're going to verify where the lines are. Um, we're going to look at the different parameter of the line, the, the size, the material. We're going to look at the pressure it's under and then we'll work on locating that leak. So just kind of a repeat, we're going to locate the line. Uh, confirm the type of line. We're going to mark it with accuracy, establish the test area. Uh, we're going to show you exactly where those leaks are. Um, it's also helpful when we're testing, we want to locate the valves, any other test points. You know, and this is where we'll need, you know, the, the lake detector needs the help of the city to go through and find the different parameters the type of the line, how many services, the laterals, you know, pressure on the line. Um, do we need to know the pressure relief valves and the different pumps in the area, just to rule those things out for our test. Um, and again, just going through detection variables, the test points, we're going to go on the main valves, hydrants, curb stop, the meters, the blow up. <coughs> and again, just a little repeat, we're going to go through the different line variables. Um, the, and the line size. Those are that's all the information we need either to put in the correlator or just help us test. Um, so we can do different types of equipment. We can do ground miking. We can go through all of the asphalt, concrete, gravel, you know, dirt. Um, ambience noise sometimes can affect the type of testing, as you all know, whether it's you know wind or rain, a lot of traffic. So again, just a quick picture of, you know, when we're looking for the different services, the different valves and hydrants, and then we can isolate that leak. Use the correlator. Um, that, and you probably know how a correlator works, but it just goes through the velocity that the sound travels. We hook it up to with the hydrants. The sound travels on the pipe and then gives us the determining factor where that leak is. And basically, you know, we're here to encourage you to, to find the leaks quickly or ahead of time doing surveys because, as you know, they're expensive. They cause a lot of damage. Um, they cause a lot of deterioration. We do a lot of work with insurance companies, and they claim that a water claim damage, <coughs> water damage claim, excuse me, is more costly even than fire because it can just destroy so much stuff. 
These are different cities or customers that we've worked with. <coughs> but we find leaks on wells too, you know. Sometimes there, you know, well companies will go out and they'll repair the well or a customer will call and say, you know, our pump constantly runs. Well, you know, again, just to cut down the expense, if we go out and find those leaks in that area, can be repaired versus replacing the whole line. And this was in the, in the dairy barn. You know, this dairy farmer doesn't have to move everybody out for a while. He can repair this very quickly. So we find leaks into all different kinds of things, the swimming pools, the big play features. The swim pads, anything under concrete that you can't see. We do boiler heat leaks, septic line leaks. Um, we work for the, the homeowner, the city. We do big commercial buildings. We do new, new construction. So bottom line is our purpose is to help save water and help you save money and save wear and tear. So later on in the month is fix a week, leak week, which is a good time to kind of increase the awareness of your city residents. The EPA has a great website that's there on the bottom. Um, they have a lot of information you can put into a newsletter to have your residents look for things and to help you, you know, help them save their money and water too. That's it. All right. Anybody have any questions for Rebecca? You know, water travels in goofy places, but uh, I saw that slide in the dairy barn. And don't call me to go into a dairy barn. I won't do it. I grew up on a 70 cow dairy farm, and I will not go into a dairy barn to this day. I'm done. I'm done with that. Let's give Rebecca a round of applause for her. Thank you.